Okay, in this part of the tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to try and build the GUI that we're going to use, which is the whole point of that of what we're putting into Unity. It's it's really about the GUI, not about the rendering of the 3D world um, for this assignment. So we're going to need to get a couple things for this. We're going to get a color picker from the asset store, and we're also going to get the default skin that Unity uh, comes with. The skin is the look and feel of the UI elements that you would get naturally if you just uh, asked for a, um, a text field or a radio button. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to get the, a copy of that skin so that we can style our elements um, differently, uh, but base it on what comes with Unity naturally. And the reason why we need to do that is because um, Android uh, has a very high resolution screen, so we need to increase the font size of that. Okay, so let's start by importing two things. We're going to import a color picker, and I'm going to pick one from the asset store that I know how to work with. It's not great, but it'll, it'll do for this um, assignment. All right, so let's do that. All right, so let's open up the asset store. Let me shrink it so you can see it. All right, and then what we're going to look for is we're going to look for uh, the skin that comes with Android. See if that comes up. Uh, 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 looking for it. Let's see. Okay, this is what I'm looking for, the built-in GUI skin. So this is made by Unity uh, Technologies. This is the one that it comes with, and we're just gonna import it so that we can um, uh, start from something that we've already got and then edit it as a um, edit it as a beginning piece. Okay, that's our first one. And we're waiting for it to come in. And any time now. Did it, work? Did it happen? Oh, there it is. Okay. That's the first thing I want. And then the second thing I want is I want color picker. And so we can pick the color of our pen stroke. And let's see, I used one before. I think this is the one that I used, and it's fine. You might want to use a different one. Okay. Great, so we should have that. There's our color picker, there's our built-in skin. All right, so now let's start building our GUI. And just like we did with our network helper, we're gonna add a component and we're gonna add a script that's gonna get run by Unity when our project, when our scene gets executed. C sharp, and we'll call it my GUI. We'll call it my GUI script. All right, and let's go ahead and edit that. All right, so the way Unity works is that when you have a class like this, anything that you declare in the beginning of this class as being public will show up as a field that you can enter into the GUI. So we're gonna create a public variable called GUI skin. We're gonna save that, and then we're gonna go back to Unity. And when we after we recompile, we'll see that now there's this spot here, not just for the script that's going to be run, but for this public variable that's declared in the script. And so now we're going to go to our built-in skin. We're going to drag and drop that over here. And so we're going to get the styling that comes with our skin automatically um, layered on top of any GUI elements that we build. If we want to edit that skin, we can double click on it. And we'll do that in a second. But you can see that there's a bunch of different formatting things that you can do here. Okay, so let's go back to our GUI element. And let's go back to our script. All right, start is used for initialization. It's like a constructor, but it's not technically a constructor. The constructor for this class is managed by Unity, and you don't want to overwrite it, or Unity won't be able to run the code that it wants to run on its um, initialization. Instead, Unity declares a different um, function that's called start, and, and Unity will call the start function 
when it's ready to execute this script on behalf of this game object. So the first thing that we're going to do in start is we're going to check to make sure that something has been assigned to that GUI skin so we don't accidentally um, use that variable if nothing's been assigned. So what we're doing is we're saying if this my GUI skin right here equals null, meaning back in the user interface there's no skin associated with it, then we're going to error out. And we'll do um, we'll call this debug function. This debug function is something that we're going to define in a second. And then this dot enabled equals false means we're going to turn off this whole game object so that nothing else will happen. And then we'll return. So let's go back and yeah, let's add a debug function. So our debug function we'll just put at the bottom. And all we're going to do is we're going to create a list of errors that we can access if we want to put it on our UI or something. So our errors is going to be a list of strings. Anytime we add something to our debug, we'll put it in our errors. And actually, let's not call it errors since it's just going to be debug strings. So we'll change the name to debugs. All right. And then we'll also use the built-in debug.log to output it to our Unity console. All right. So the first thing that we've, we're doing is checking to see that's been assigned uh, to, um, to something. And now we know we're going to need to keep track of a group name and a drawing name. So let's keep, let's add those and we'll make those private. All right, what else do we know we need? Well, we know we're going to need to keep track of whether the pen is up or down. I'm going to make that public because we're going to need to know in other parts of our UI whether or not it's up or down. And we'll start with it being not down. All right. Um, we're also going to need to have a stroke name so that when we upload things to the server, we have something to call it. It's called a stroke name. And we're going to need to keep track of the color of the stroke. So we'll keep track of the color as uh, pen color. And I think that's it for now. OK, great. So let's initialize those things in our start function. We'll say group name starts off being group name. Of course, you can make it anything you want. We'll make our drawing name equal to, well, we know that each time we run this, we're running into a little bit of a problem. So we'll, um, we'll actually assign it to, uh, let's say, a random variable. Um, and random is something that's built into the Unity engine. And so we can access random however we want. Random.value will return a number between 0.0, .0 and 1.0 inclusively. So we'll just make our drawing name be a number. And then we'll start with a stroke name equal to 0. And we'll convert that to a string when we need to. Okay, let's see. Now what do we need to do? Next, um, let's go back to our Unity engine and let's add a color picker to our environment. Okay, game object, create other, uh, asset, create, hmm, I'll do it here. Here's our color picker object, drop it in there. Okay, great. So in our color picker, we have a bunch of things that we have access to. The main one I'm concerned about is a starting position, where we're going to put it in our UI, and then we have these callback functions for that get called when our um, code gets executed. All right, so let's now go back to our um, GUI object and let's get a uh, let's get a reference to that color picker. Uh, okay, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to say we we need our color picker, and we haven't declared that locally, so let's go ahead and declare that locally. Because we're going to be looking for it throughout Unity, we're going to need to get a whole array of all the color pickers that are available, although we'll only find one. Okay, and we're going to need to um, invoke a function that looks a little bit like HTML when you do a DOM search, a document object model search. And instead, what we're going to do is we're going to look for, um, for in the static variable game object, which is uh, kind of a parent for all of the game objects. We're going to find all objects of type, and then it's a generic, so we'll do color picker. And that's going to start in our hierarchy here and go through and find all the elements that are of type color picker and return it in an array here. 
All right, and then we need to set a value for, we need to set a variable in each of those color pickers um, uh, so that we can draw it correctly. So we're going to go through each element of the color picker and I'm say use the external drawer and I'm going to type one. All okay, and then we know from our color picker back in our Unity object, in our Unity control here, we find that there's these callback functions when the when the color gets set. So we're going to go ahead and implement those in Unity. All right. Let's put those down at the bottom. And we'll say, all right, when the color is set by our color picker, we're going to assign our pen color to that color. And we'll make a little debug notice telling us that it, it has happened. And then if we ever need to get our color, um, we will tell our picker what color we're currently using. All right. All right, great. So let's save that and see how we're doing now with respect to errors in our Unity console. All right, we've got some problems. Our skin doesn't have an Arial font available, so we don't have Arial built in. So let's go to our skin which we defined here in my GUI. When we look at our skin, it says that it's looking for Arial rounded bold. If we pick a different, pick our fonts, we can see that, um, well, it's there. I'm not sure what the error is, but let's go ahead and switch it to Arial. Oops, sorry, you didn't see that. When I clicked on that, it showed me all of the fonts that were in my works in my um, asset folder. I'm gonna go ahead and pick Arial as the font and see if that helps at all. Let's come back to that. Okay, so on line 34, we have a syntax error in the GUI script. Spell color picker right. What else did we get? Line 36. Well, I think if we do that, it'll work out right. Hmm, what am I not seeing? Oh. There we go, great. All right, next error, the type or namespace list one cannot be found. Are we missing a reference in eight? All right, line eight. Okay, our list of strings, something that's causing a problem with our list of strings. Oh, that requires us to add another function here. Come back to Unity and how are we going? Can I implicitly convert int to string in 32? And 32. Stroke name's an int. It's an int. Stroke name equals zero. Not sure what's wrong there. Color picker does not exist in the current context. Let's come back to that one. 34. Color picker. Hmm. 